So our mass moment of inertia is r squared dn integrated over the entire mass. And I want to show you what that looks like and how we deal with that math so you can be familiar with that. If you're taking Calculus 3 right now, they often cover the same topic at the same time, or pretty close to the same time. So if you're in Calc 3 right now, you might be seeing that. If you're not in Calc 3, don't worry about it. I want to show you what it looks like, but we'll use some other tricks in this actual class. So I'm going to show you what this looks like for two different cases. The first case is what I call a ring or a hoop. This is a situation where we have a very thin band and almost all of our mass is distributed right around the edge of our object. And the second case is what I call a cylinder. And this is where we have all of the mass sort of uniformly distributed across a wheel or a circle of some variety. And you can imagine that these two things are things that we actually see in real life or can approximate a lot of things as. So they can be really useful uh, as approximations or because they're something that we see in real life. So going back to our integral, integral of r squared dm. For both of these cases, I'm going to make a very reasonable assumption that it's constant density. So I'm going to assume constant density. And if I assume a constant density, you might remember that mass density is equal to mass divided by volume, or I could rewrite this in the differential form as dn is equal to the density times dv. And this is how we almost always actually do this, unless we have this in a function of mass. So rewriting this, if our density is constant, I can pull it outside the integral. So I have the density times the integral of r squared dv. And this is a much simpler way of dealing with this. And I'll show you how that works when we do the solid one. But when we have just the ring, I want to go back to our original equation. i is equal to the integral r squared dm. And I'm going to make an assumption here as well. Assume the thickness is negligible. So if we assume that it's a very small thickness, then all of our mass is at this radius r. So now is radius a function of mass? Or another way to think about this, is the mass at different radiuses? It's not, because it's all at the same outer radius r. So this simplifies in this case to i is equal to r squared n. And so if we have this kind of cylindrical ring or hoop, we can calculate the mass moment of inertia if we know the mass and the radius which is pretty clever. Okay, so now into the solid one. That trick we used here isn't going to work because we have some mass that's at this really little inside radius, almost all the way to zero at the center, and we have mass kind of evenly distributed all the way out to the edge. So this is where we need to go back to our constant density r squared dv situation. So our mass moment of inertia here, say, is the density times the integral r squared dv. And now if you haven't taken Calc 3, don't worry about this too much, but dv here is a differential volume element. And this is a circle, cylinder, so I'm thinking cylindrical coordinates. And for cylindrical coordinates, I have a little differential kind of semi-circular integral. And that dv has a volume of r dr d theta dz. So the r is just because it has to be so far from the radius or from the center. And the farther you are from the center, the farther a differential element d theta in that theta direction, the bigger that will be. So that's why we have the r dr d theta dz. So if I plug that in up here, I have i is equal to the constant density times now I have a triple integral r squared r dr d theta dz. If you haven't done multiple integrals before, don't worry. And it's actually not that hard. We just do them one at a time. And so because there's no, actually, let's rewrite this first of all to make it a little bit simpler. 
So three integrals. R squared times R is R cubed, and that's the only thing I want to do here. dr, d theta, dz. I'm going to go ahead and do all of these integrals at once, and the reason I'm going to do them all at once is because there's no thetas and there are no z's, so I just had to have to add a theta and a z in when I do this. And R cubed now, this will become 1 fourth R to the fourth, and then I need to do theta and z. And then in the r direction, I'm going to go from 0 to my actual r, so that doesn't matter. In the z direction, I'm, or in the theta direction, I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to do the entire circle because we have a whole circle here. And in the z direction, I'm going to go from z, 0 to however thick that is. And so if I do that here, now I have our density, 1 quarter r to the fourth, Theta is now 0 to 2 pi, so I actually have 2 pi minus 0 here, and z. So the mass of our cylinder is equal to the density times the volume. And the volume of this cylinder is, if you remember, pi r squared, that's the volume of a circle, times how high it is, that's the z direction here. And you know what? We have all of those in our integral over here, right? We have a pi, we have a z, we have a density, and we have r to the fourth, so that can just become r to the second. And so how we almost always see this actually written is that the mass moment of inertia is one fourth times two is one half r mass, so that'll get rid of everything else almost, except we still have an r squared. So our mass moment of inertia for this solid cylinder is 1 half mr squared. So those are two examples of how that actual integral looks in terms of all of the math and the integration. And if you're thinking, oh, Liza, integrals, I'm feeling a little bit. Integrals are great and we use them and it's good to be comfortable with them, but that's not really what I'm testing you in this class. And so if you have a textbook, and this is uh, an older, this is the 11th edition, but all the editions of the textbook have the same thing. Sometimes it's in the front cover, sometimes it's in the back cover. It has this beautiful table on the very back cover of this textbook. It says center of gravity and mass moment of inertia of homogeneous solids. And you know what? They have that thin, they call it a thin ring. They have a cylindrical disc. Um, and they have lots of other shapes here as well. And so for the rest of this class, if you have a somewhat common shape, which is I think all that we're gonna do this term, you can go ahead and refer to this table or a similar table and go ahead and pull the equation for those off of here. So you can see the thin ring, it says the mass moment of inertia is mr squared. And for the cylindrical disc or circular disc, says the mass moment of inertia is 1 half mr squared. So they agree with the same answers I got. And those are some of the basics of calculating the mass moment of inertia.